we begin book three of Tanya. Book three, the Alter Rebbe calls it Lukute Amarim, a compilation of teachings. That's he just you know feels he's just compiled other people's teachings in his humility. Part three, entitled Igeris Achuba. Igeris means letters or epistle, epistle, if you want to be fancy. Uh, Hachuba of repentance. Chapter one. Tanya Vesayif Yuma has been taught at the end of the Brisa in the tractate Yuma of the Talmud. There are three types of atonement and repentance, tshuva, is necessary with each one of them. So if one failed, this is now quoting from the Brisa, from the teaching similar to our Mishnah. Oh, yeah. Questions to come. If one failed to fulfill a positive commandment and you repent, you're forgiven forthright. Immediately you're forgiven. So for example, if you forgot to say today the Shema on time, which is a positive commandment, right? It needs to be said um, at night time, after dark, and daytime until three hours of the day. So here it's approximately like nine o'clock in the morning in Montreal, but you could say it now this time of year. Other times of year, it could be between nine and 10, it kind of fluctuates. So, but, and you forgot to say it on the proper time. So you forgot to fulfill a mitzvah. That's a positive commandment to say the Shema twice a day. So if you repented, and what repentance means, we'll get to, you know, all this. We're just quoting now from the bride, so. Uh, fourth right, you're forgiven. If though you violated a prohibition in the Torah, like eating non-kosher food, Torah tells us, you know, that's a that's transgressing a prohibition, right? Like to eat something from a pig, or to eat something that is not slaughtered properly, and so on. And then you've repented after doing that transgression. So repentance is tentative. And you have to wait for your kipper for atonement. So what, what does it sound like over here? And the Alter Rebbe now goes off, quoting from the Brisa, and to discuss the difference between positive and negative commandment. So it sounds over here as if the negative commandment is more important than the positive commandment. Why? Because positive commandment, you get atonement right away. Negative commandment, you have to do repentance, but you don't get atonement right away. You don't get forgiven and atoned right away. You have to wait till Yom Kippur. So Al Tareb explains that that's not, that's, don't think that therefore the positive commandment is less valuable. No, the positive commandment actually takes superiority and supersedes a, neg a negative command when the two come um, in, in conflict with each other. The positive commandment takes priority over the negative commandment. And why is that? So, for example, like uh, a koyin, uh, you know, you're know, you not allowed to wear wool and linen, but uh, there can be wool and linen in the um, uh, in tzitzis, for example. And um, it would be okay, primarily, yes. It would, be, it would be okay, why? Because the positive commandment of wearing tzitzis is, is greater than the prohibition when those two things co uh, collide. And, and why is that? It's because the positive commandment, what does it do? It elicits from God, from the Ein Saif, a light. As we know that there's 248 positive commandments, why? Because there's two, four, 248 as the Zohar explains, limbs of the king, figuratively meaning, what does it mean, limbs of the king? As the limb has a particular function to help, you know, uh, of the body, right? So likewise, 
the positive commandment has a particular function that it brings the divine light of God into this world. And that's what it means that God, when we say that, when we make the blessing over a mitzvah, that God has sanctified us with his commandments. What does it mean he's hallowed us with his commandments? means that the positive commandment hallowed us. How does it hallow us? Because it brings down a light of God into us. Because it brings down a light into us. Right? So, we bring a light every time we say the Shema, put on our tefillin, give charity, all positive commandments. It hallows us. Why? Well, what does it mean? It doesn't mean it hallows us. It means the light of God encompasses us. But repentance, which you need to do, if, for example, if he didn't say the Shema, right, to rectify the lack of fulfillment of the positive commandment, right, well, you can't fix what you just did, what you didn't do, right? You can't fix what you, if you missed, a missed opportunity you can't fix. The opportunity of doing something positive that brings new light into this world, that illuminates you and the world, right? It's called a crookedness that cannot be corrected. Because if you neglect saying the Shema, for, again, for example, now you can be more scrupulous afterwards when you do tshuva, but the light of the Shema that this morning I could have brought into this world to hallow me and the world, I can't bring that anymore into this world. That light is gone. Now, tonight's light I could bring into the world. That I could do. But that's tonight's light. That's tomorrow's light of the positive commandment. But what I lacked in bringing it, I can't do any, I can't bring it anymore. So there's nothing more, there's nothing to fix except for the future. The past I can't fix. Right? It's a missed opportunity. Is that, that's the positive commandment. On the other end, a negative commandment, what happens when you, God forbid, ate something not kosher? Or you said, Lashon Hara, you spoke ill. What does that mean? It means that there's evil that cleaves to our soul. Positive commandment means I didn't introduce a new light that I could have hallowed my soul. Negative commandment means I've actually introduced klipa into my being. Negativity. I've guard myself with schmutz, with filth. That's why repentance is insufficient. I need Yom Kippur to bring atonement, to bring the cleansing. That, why? Because I have to go to a greater place to bring the cleansing. I have to go lifnei avaya, before God. Which means, as Yom Kippur is called before God, meaning higher than the name of avaya, higher than the name of God, to bring the cleansing. I brought, I brought a detachment I, I feel uh, something filthy to the name of God that gives me vitality. So I got to go higher than that to cleanse it. When do, can you go higher than that? That's Yom Kippur. Higher than the name of Abaya. Therefore, we can't say bring any leniency to a positive commandment that you get atonement right away. Because the reason why you get atonement right away it's because you can't fix the past. All there is is about the future. But when it comes to a prohibition, there is something about the past that you need cleansing for. Because now there's negativity, there's klipa, there's evil that is cleaving upon one's soul that you need to cleanse. Well, the tshuva in the moment is insufficient. You need Yom Kippur also to bring that atonement. So therefore, don't learn from this, infer any leniency when it comes to a positive commandment that you are forgiven right away that when you forgot, for example, to say the Shema in the proper time. And in particularly, don't find a leniency when it comes to the study of Torah. On the contrary, God has certainly, has even glossed over other terrible sins 
idolatry, adultery, and murder, but not when it comes to, to an excuse to the neglect of studying of Torah, which I won't go there right now. I just want to bring out the, how important the positive commandments are. Okay, now we, we return to the Brisa, to the original teachings, for the third level. So we have positive commandments, negative commandments. Then we have sin that's punishable by excision, being cut off from God, meaning premature death, or execution by heavenly court, right? But all by heaven we're talking about here. Uh, uh, no, one second. So I'm, I'm sorry, execution by, by a court down here, right? Now there's someone murdered, for example, right? and it's a possibility of execution, for example. So now you need repentance, right? You need also Yom Kippur, but that's not enough. The individual needs to suffer, and suffering is about scouring the soul. Scouring the soul. As it says, with a rod shall I remember their sin, with affliction, their iniquity. Um, and that's the end of the brisa of the teachings. And the end of the first, the beginning of chapter one of Geras Chuba. We all go through suffering. But we recognize that the only reason why God puts us through suffering is in order to cleanse ourselves. First of all, we wouldn't suffer so much. And secondly, we'd find meaning in the suffering. We'd find good in it. We would find something that's good. Because, for example, if your tooth didn't hurt, you wouldn't fix your tooth. But because it hurts, you go to the dentist and they put in a filling and it fixes it. If it didn't hurt, then what would happen is your tooth would finally rot and you'd lose it. So pain is actually, can be a positive thing or is a positive thing. The, the, in our, when we look at pain itself, with the physical eye, it's just painful and hurtful. In the mind's eye though, we can see the reason, if we understand that there's a reason for the pain, then it's in order to bring cleansing, meaning to fix something that needs fixing. And this is what God does. And when we can see it that way, then hopefully, just like the tooth will fix, We'll also fix something spiritually that we need to fix in our lives. A powerful idea. Okay. Questions. I'm sure I lost some questions on the feed. Sorry. About that. Yeah, let's go on Instagram. Two question marks before you ask a question so I could clearly see that it indeed is a question. Otherwise. No, so tzitzis is there is 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 a tzitzis is a biblical law, and wool and linen is also biblical law. So they're both biblical, and um, positive commandment is greater than the than the negative when they come to a head. So therefore, we push away the negative commandment and fulfill the positive commandment. Now. Ultimately, when it comes to tzitzis, since you can wear tzitzis without wool and linen together, um, but uh, in the base, but the basic idea is yes. 
thank you. And that was thank you for the question. Yes, every moment we have an opportunity to bring light. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, Lawrence, if you don't mind to um, direct message me so we can discuss further, okay? Thank you. Uh, Davida, did our ancestors have to wait until Sinai at, at the first Yom Kippur to be forgiven of all of their sins? Yes. Is there any difference between if someone transgresses a positive commandment versus a negative one? Well, yes, we just made the distinction. The positive is a missed opportunity that can't come back. Every moment, as we learned in the second book of Tanya, every moment God is giving vitality. And every that vitality is a divine light. That divine light can be we, through doing a mitzvah, can make that divine light into a holy light. Some people will say, oh, that, ooh, holy cow, but don't, because that's idolatry. <laughs> Cows aren't holy. Uh, so, that you introduce a light by doing a positive commandment, like giving charity, or that's not a good example, because you can do that anytime. But saying the Shema at the right time, tefillin, right? So if you miss that opportunity, miss the opportunity to hallow, bring that, the hallowed light of God into this world, that the vitality isn't from Klippa's Naga, but it's, a, but it's coming from Kedusha, it's coming from holiness. It is embracing a holiness of you and this world. That's what positive commandment is doing. A negative commandment means by... Observing a negative commandment means you're not allowing klipa, negativity, dirt, to embrace you when you fulfill that. But when you transgress, then you are allowing the dirt to embrace you, to cleave to you. Therefore, you need to clean it. Well, that cleaning is a process. Cleaning is a process. It doesn't just happen, right? Vida, um, our uh, direct message uh, uh, to Tanya Rabbi. Are our emotions similar to Hashem's, or are we just use it as a metaphor to understand on the on the? No, they're similar, or not similar. They're somewhat similar, yes. Uh, there we go, Lawrence. I just put in a link or a email. Okay. Leib Chaim, what is it compared to? I'm not clear on that question. What do you mean, what is it compared to? Other times, but 248. What about? Leib say. Oh, the negative commands. Okay. The 248 positive commandments are compared to 248 limbs of the body that have a function, right? They have a function to do something, right? So likewise, the 248 commands have a function to do something, to bring the light of God in all 248 different kinds of ways, just like, like the eye sees and the ear hears. So each mitzvah has a unique light that it brings into this world. The negative commandments are compared to 365 um blood vessels, sinews, uh, paths of blood. 
So you don't want to introduce, God forbid, into the blood something negative that can taint the blood and therefore needs a cleansing. Okay. Mary has a question. Where is the question, Mary? I don't see it. Kosher is need, Jews need to keep kosher. Non-Jews don't need to keep kosher. So, Mary, if you can yeah, email me. I said put my email over here. Um, so I can get more clear the situation, okay? Rabbi Chabadzuchin.com. Okay? We're going to Rambam. Going to start in a few minutes. And then 6.30 we have a Torah class on the Parsha. You don't want to miss it. That's on, on Facebook, on Chabad ZK. And it's on Zoom. 770, 770, 80, Vida, if you can put it up. Yenta Televenta, put it up also on uh, Instagram. If it's not there already. And then, um, 8 o'clock, we have TRC. We just had a discussion on Thursday in TRC about transgender, which was awesome discussion. Um, and... Yeah, and uh, we're doing, I uh, having a great discussion. All right, folks, I'm Rabbi Ronnie Fine, coming to you for Chabad Zuch, and today, Shemad Shalkanov. It's a privilege and a pleasure to share with you, Tani. Have a wonderful day. Thank you for joining.